Much of the work at Wicks Organ Company is done by hand with simple and sometimes very old tools. Building pipe organs for over a century has taught them that getting the job done right is more important than doing it fast. It's the way Americans used to build things. We have about 13 trades here. We have metalworking, we have pipe making, woodworking of all kinds. Of course, the technical part with the wiring, the finishing, this all in under one roof. It's like a lot of little shops, you know, in the old days. We start with raw materials, lumber that's kiln dried from the Alaska. We have tin and, and lead from Borneo, Malaysia, Missouri. We put all that together, and therefore you have something that it has real value, real worth that will last for, for years. Before the turn of the 20th century, John Wick was a watchmaker in Highland, Illinois. He was also an entrepreneur who taught himself how to build pipe organs for churches. In 1917, he moved the company to its present site, where the manufacture of organs has continued without interruption. This is a Swiss community and a lot of people from Switzerland very good with their hands crafting and, and very curious and, and always wanting to invent <laughs> and produce and, and improve. I'm always amazed. I come through and everybody's scratching their head. How are we going to solve this? And I come back later. Oh, we figured it out. Okay, good. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> so we go on from there. And that's how we came to what we are today. There's just years and years of figuring things out, you know, and then passing it on. We've had a lot of father-sons come through here. Our children are third generation. There were three Wick brothers that started out. My husband was one of three brothers, and now we had three boys, so here it's... <laughs> Each organ is numbered. Today they're working on their 6,397th instrument. That's an average of more than 60 organs a year since the company was founded in 1906. They don't make changes here simply for the sake of change. The workrooms look and feel much as they did in 1917. Many of the machines from that same era still perform the jobs they were originally built to do. A lot of it's been here since the beginning of the company, even before electricity when they were used a steam engine to actually run all the equipment at the same time and with a long belt. Some of our older drill presses and things are just retrofitted from those old machines. Actually, it was a dramatic technical innovation that set Wicks apart from other organ builders. In the 1920s, the company invented an electrical device that controlled the flow of air into the pipes. They called it direct electric action. What this replaced was what they called a pneumatic action, which relied on air pressure to make it work. It required a lot more air pressure from the organ, and it also had so many moving parts that it created a lot of problems. These were originally all connected, leather boots, that allowed this to go up and down. And as you can see, they've all deteriorated over the years and we're constantly in need of being changed. Each pipe is created to make one particular sound. But the number of pipes any organ has depends on how many different sounds each key is capable of producing. Generally there are 61 notes or 61 pipes for the keyboard. Uh, so there could be as many as several thousand pipes in an organ. Um, it, it, as you're looking here at the console, you have 61 notes. So that means one pipe for each note. And all of these gadgets on the side are known as stops and those stops correspond to sounds and pitches and each stop will have 61 pipes. Originally, organs were what they call tracker action, which is just pure mechanical. Your, your finger lifted the valve uh, to let the air into the pipe. But, you know, it's quite a task when you think about it to try to make 3,000 pipes all dance together in harmony. Something's got to be controlling it. 
um, it doesn't magically float from the organ console up to the to the pipe. So this is just the this is the circuitry here that that allows us to connect the organist's fingers and toes to the pipes. It's really not as complicated as you might think. It's it's kind of like a personal computer anymore these days. The the controls have gotten simpler, believe it or not. It used to be that uh, instead of all these circuits, you ran individual wires to create the logic. <laughs> So you have pins all in order here. If I, um, if I were to play up the keyboard, it would be basically activating each of these pins in sequence as you go up the keyboard. Uh, each wire that you see attached here leads to a pipe inside the organ. Pipes can be made of either wood or metal, depending upon the kind of sound they are intended to produce. The metal pipes are created in much the same way they've been made for centuries, pouring the metal and shaping and assembling them. And there's much more to an organ pipe than, well, just a pipe. This pipe has a toe, a foot, a mouth, ears, lower lip, upper lip, and the body, and the tuning slide. But each pipe has to sound exactly as intended. And that's where, once again, the human touch is critical. I um, make each pipe work. There are five voicers here, and we each are responsible for taking the pipes and making them sound like the one sample that the tonal director has set for us. Uh, the mouth, you can adjust the upper lip, the distance between the upper lip and the lower lip, by gently shaving away or cutting with a knife, or you can move that upper lip in and out, the metal is very soft, or the lower lip can be moved in and out as well. And again, the toll hole regulates volume and how much wind is rushing from the chest into the pipe, creating the sound. Then in the end, um, when the whole thing is assembled, um, we erect it here in the tower or in the erecting room um, and see just how all of the, the ranks of pipes stack up with each other um, and then make them you know, fairly at home with each other here. But then once they're shipped to their final destination, um, I or the tonal director will go and uh, spend several weeks making the organ at home in its new um, abode. <laughs> the musical repertoire of the pipe organ is sacred and classical, music for the heart and soul. It seems appropriate that the instruments themselves be built in that same spirit. We feel like we're carrying on a tradition, a legacy has been handed to us of hundreds of years of organ music as well as um, organ building. And we hope to continue that on so that all of that glorious literature will still have a means to be played. People today really want that sound, that satisfying sound of air producing the current, you know, moving the airwaves. Then you get in touch with the divine. You t lift you up out of the human. You're no longer on this earth. It's a place where you can go and listen and be healed.